Welcome to the Corp Vault channel. In this video, we will discuss Com Vault Interactive Bare Metal Recovery. Please like, share, comment, or suggest. Subscribe for more videos, and you can follow us on Instagram. In this video, we will use Com Vault's One Touch Bare Metal Recovery to recover the server. We will be using Interactive One Touch Bare Metal Recovery. Using one touch you can recover a failed computer, or create a clone of a server. In this recovery procedure, the operating system is restored, and not reinstalled. Also, all the applications are recovered automatically on a new server. The new server can have either similar, or different hardware. Please note, like on older versions, access to one touch server is not required to perform the offline restore. Let's first check if the server, for which we are going to try BMR, has a good backup. In the Comcell browser, expand client computer. Expand the client server. Expand iData agent, in this case file system. Expand backup set. Right click on the sub client, in which system state backup is configured. Select backup history. Just to let you know. Backup history can be checked from various levels, and these options might little vary, but most of them remain same. If you view job history from client level, then you see jobs made by all iData agents installed on the server. If you view backup history, from the iData agent level, then you see all jobs made by various backup sets. If you view backup history, from the backup set level, then you see all jobs made by various sub-clients. If you view backup history at the sub-client level, then it will only see jobs made by that sub-client. Backup job history filter. Backup type. Specifies that the job history window should display only those backup jobs that correspond to full backup, or differential backup, incremental backup, synthetic full backup, or all of them. You can filter the job history, by job ID, or by specifying the range of the job ID. Job status, displays those jobs that correspond to a specified job status. You can choose jobs that are completed, failed, killed or all of them. Specify time range, displays those jobs that occur within a specified time zone, and time threshold by selecting a start day and time and an end day and time. You can also check the job history using the relative time, that would be jobs made in last X hours, X days, X weeks, X months or X years. Click Advanced. Number of Operations. Specifies the number of operations that should be included in the history window. You can select for all operations, or, only the specified number of operations. Include aged data, includes data from jobs that have already been pruned, or aged off. Include backup copy and catalog snapshot jobs, include the backup copy operations in the job history window. Once done click OK. We do see successful full backup job for the sub-client. Size of the application is showing approximately 13.5 GB. Let's browse and check the contents of this backup. Right click on the job, and select browse and restore. Browse and restore options window. As we have selected a particular job for browse and recovery, we have already narrowed down our search, so most of the options are grayed out here. We will discuss about other tabs, and options in detail, in another video, where we discuss about, granular recovery. For bare metal recovery, these options are not needed. Once done click view content. Under default backup set, we see the content, that is backed up. We have system state, fixed drive C, E, F, and I. Also you see the disk sizes here. Please note, when you create a skeleton of server, for BMR recovery. Ensure you have all the fixed drives connected as shown here. Do not add any extra drives, 
or storage, that is, for any mount path that was connected to the server. You can add the mount path later after the server is up and ready. If you would like to know the media where the backup is stored, and if available, then click, list media and size. You would see the media where it is stored, and the size of the backup as stored on the media. This size is not the actual backup size. For a BMR recovery, you need to have a system state component, called one touch file successfully backed up. If not, you cannot proceed with BMR recovery. We have one failed folder for this job. Nothing to worry because, if system state component fails to back up, then the backup job either complete with errors, or fail. Let's check the log files if we can confirm, one touch files backed up successfully, or not. Right click on the client. View. Log files. From, select the log file to open window. Look for clbackup.log. Select the log file and click open. Once the log file open, search for one touch. Backing up one touch files. One touch files were backed up successfully. Please go through these BMR requirements. Also, Please go through the vendor's website for more up-to-date information on these points. Let's download the ISO file needed for BMR recovery. You can download the ISO file from the Commvault store, or from Maintenance Advantage site. We will now download it from Maintenance Advantage site. In the web browser. Browse to ma.comvault.com. Log in to the website. In the login text box type in your username and password and press login. After successful login, on the top right, next to the search box, you will see the version. From the downloads and packages menu. Select Next Generation Platform 11.0 Software and Feature Releases. In the V11 Software Downloads page, scroll down to check available versions. It is important to note that, the ISO file you download, must be of the same service pack version, as that of the ComServe, and the media agent. If you see the service pack version you have is expired. Then contact the vendor to get the needed ISO file. Click on the download icon, for V11 SP16 software and service pack installer. In the V11 electronic software distribution page, scroll down to check for available, one touch live boot disks. You have three versions of live boot disk. Live boot basic disk. Live boot disk with Dell drivers and live boot disk with HP drivers. You have live boot disk for x64 version of Windows and x86 version as well. Ensure you verify the hardware, and then select appropriate one touch live boot disk. Please note, if you do not have appropriate disk, then you can download the live boot basic disk, and then add needed drivers to that ISO. Contact the vendors if you need assistance. Let's start the interactive BMR recovery. For this video, we have picked Windows 2008 R2 standard server. We have created the skeleton of the server, as shown in the ComVault browse and recovery window. The actual size of drive C is 40 GB, but here we have selected 60 GB, in accordance to the pre-checks. ComVault will temporarily keep the entire backup in the job results directory and then reapply as and when needed to recover the server. In other words, it uses job results directory to cache the data. Once restore completes the cache is cleared, and the space can be reused. Again, we would like to emphasize to pick the right ISO disk for BMR, if not, the restore will not be successful. Power on the server. It might take a while to get to the first screen, so be patient.
in the language selection dialog, select appropriate language, and then click OK. On the welcome page, it first checks for the response files, and if no response file found, then a warning message appears, that says that the response files are not found. Click Cancel to start the interactive restore. Memory status shows the required RAM, towards the available RAM. If the RAM is low than the required one, then you see blue screen of death, and you would not have come thus far. Firewall information. Skip this step if you do not have a firewall configured between the client, and the comm serve. But if you have a firewall configured between the client, and the comm serve, click the option to configure the settings. In the client group name box, type the name of the client computer group with the firewall configuration. Binary version shows the ISO service pack version. On the detected disk devices page, click yes, all disk drives have been detected. If you do not see the required drives, then you need to add the drivers to the downloaded ISO. We have seen in certain Dell PowerEdge servers, we do not see the disk drives, for which we need to add additional drivers to the ISO. On the Client and Network Information page, enter the ComServe host name, that is fully qualified domain name. Enter the IP address. Enter the ComSell username and password. Select the network connection from the drop down list. If DHCP enabled then leave the option, obtain an IP address automatically, enabled. If static IP need to be configured, select option, use the following IP range. Enter the IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS IPs. The client name list is empty. Click Get Clients to get the list of all file system clients on which the system state backups have been performed. Click More to see the background activity. We see the client list. If the client is a media agent, enable this option. The new window will ask you to provide the location to restore the index. You can choose a USB disk, or a network share. If network share selected, then provide the path of the index cache directory. Also provide credentials who has access to the path, better be an admin account. Once done click next. Review the summary and click next to proceed. Installing software onto the RAM drive might take a while. On the Restore Options page, if more than one backup set configured for the client, you can select one from the list. By default, the client configuration backed up by the default backup set during most recent backup will be used to restore the client. Restore from the backup before help you to perform point in time recovery. Please ensure you know the previous backup job start and completion time, and enter the same values here with no difference. Restore from copy precedence, lets you to perform recovery from either primary copy, or secondary copy, that is auxiliary copy. You can select a different media agent than the one used to perform system state backups. Enable the use media agent checkbox, and select a media agent from the list. Once done, click Next to proceed. This processing will take a while to complete. On the Restore Options page, Restore option for says volume, this option is applicable for Active Directory. You have three options to choose from the list, that is, Primary, Authoritative, and Non-Authoritative. To restore Active Directory using One Touch Recovery, select Non Authoritative. Disk Mapping. Format System Drive. This option will only format the system volume, and rest all volumes, and partitions are retained. Similar Disk Mapping. 
if the source and the destination server have similar hard disk configurations. Dissimilar disk mapping. If the destination computer has a different disk configuration than the source computer, you can restore specific volumes on the server. You can select only system volumes during restore and add the non-system volumes later. Multiple users can recover the data using one-touch recovery. In the select account list, select an account that is part of the administrator's group to restore Windows Mini setup components after one-touch recovery. Clone machine, option help you clone this server. Type in new client name, and new host name. Click advanced options. Enter the user credentials who has domain access. Reboot server after restore is completed. Once done click next. Excluded folders for restore page. You can exclude any folder, or drive from the full system restore. Enter the path of the folder or drive, and click add. Once done, click next. In the TCP IP properties dialog box, review the client internet protocol properties. Once done, click OK. Restore started. It is going to launch to similar map screen. In customize the disks dialog box, you see the source disk layout, and destination disk layout. The source disk layout is the disk layout of the source server at the time of the backup. The destination disk layout is the disk layout of the destination server. Before creating disk partitions on the destination disk, you must initialize the disk. Right click on the disk, and select one of the following options. Select the one as in source disk layout, that is, initialize as MBR basic disk. On the warning message, click yes. Repeat the same steps for the other disks. Once all the required disks are initialized, we need to map the volumes from the source disk, to the destination disks. Right click a volume in the source disk layout, and select map. In the customize the volumes window, select a disk from the available disk list. Under format options, Leave the file system as NTFS. Keep the perform quick format option enabled. Do not enable file and folder compression, unless required. In the volume size and drive letter. Map the size in MB to the available space on the disk. You can view the drive letter being assigned to the volume. Once done, click OK. Repeat the same steps to map the other volumes. Exclude mount points during restore, as mount points are not restored correctly during one touch recovery. Once all done, click OK. You see the file system restore started. If all OK you see the restore job ID. The restore job should be visible in the job controller. You can switch to Convault GUI to check the job progress. You can occasionally check the restore progress in the Convault GUI. Restore completed successfully. You can now remove the live CD, and restart the computer. If we do not reboot manually, then the application will try to auto-reboot. If you miss to take the live CD out before the reboot, then it will try to boot from the CD, and we see this error. Setup will now recover the server. 
setup will try configure the server, and this process might take a very long time. Depending on the operating system version you are restoring, you might have to restart the computer several times. Setup is preparing your computer for use. Once the server is up and ready, verify if it is all ok for use. Review the notes that we captured. We recommend to please go through the vendor's website for more up to date information on these points. These are the few advantages to highlight, but please go through the vendor's website for more up to date information. If one touch recovery fail, or give errors then you can view the logs for more info. F6 will open command prompt. F7 open explorer window. You can create a folder on comserve, or media agent, and then share it. Map the share using windows, net use command and then copy the logs for further troubleshooting. Let's go through few errors that we were able to reproduce in the lab. Error number 1. While installing the software onto the RAM drive, we got the error. Using command prompt, browsed to the location of the log files. Used notepad to open the log files. Using Windows Net Use command, map the shared folder. Used copy command to copy the logs to the map network share. Use GXTail application in the Convault base folder to analyze the logs. Once restore started, the log file you need to investigate would be clrestore.log. In the logs, we see STT pipe errors. We also see decrypt errors. It's more communication related errors. The error is related to STT pipe. We disable concurrent data transfer settings on the media agent. Right click on the media agent. Select properties. This is the setting for parallel data transfer. Control tab. Disable option. Optimize for concurrent LAN backups. Once the concurrent option is disabled, the parallel data transfer value is reset to default 25, you can increase the value if needed. Once done retry the BMR recovery. Error number 2. We got the error, at the phase where installing the software onto the RAM drive was in progress. During BMR recovery. In the Convault GUI a new client entry, with the same name as the source server is created, but with an extension, underscore recovery. This entry will remain there if the restore fail. If the restore completes then it gets automatically removed. If you see license assigned to this recovery server, then first release the license. Right click on the server. All tasks. Select release license for client. On the confirm pop-up window, click yes. After the license is released, delete the client server. Right click on the server. All tasks. Select delete. 
On the delete pop-up window, click OK. On the enter confirmation text window, type erase and reuse media. Click OK. Retry the BMR recovery. Please note, you need to repeat the same steps every time the recovery fail. Error number 3. Restore is 95% completed. Restore seems to be successful. It appears during the finalized stage we got the error. The error is related to VSS. VSS E bad state. To create this issue, we created drive C, exactly the same size as it was on source server. Convault recommends to have more space on drive C, for successful recovery. After we expanded drive C with more space, this error was not seen. Error number 4. Restore completed successfully. We tried to reboot the server and it gave error. A disk read error occurred. If the server has two disks or more, the disk drive numbers may not correspond as expected during the recovery. As a result, the system disk will be restored as a second disk, and server fails to reboot. To overcome this issue, select the dissimilar disk mapping option, and map the operating system partition to the first disk. We will end this video here. We will try creating another BMR recovery video with response file. Stay tuned to our channel, by subscribing to it, if not already done. Do subscribe for more videos. Thank you.